Okay, up for a bit of adventure today. Matt Schaefer and myself are biking on some of the best gravel roads in the world. Matt, what do you do? I am a co-manager of Bike Loudon. And what have you done? I work in the Office of Mapping for Loudon County and we helped create a really cool unpaved roads app. All for you guys, all about where these gravel roads are and where you can bike on them. Let's, Let's go, go riding! riding. Enjoying the roads is kind of like what is my bike life is all about. I love biking and, and I love what it does as a community and to bring people together. And to have these great gravel roads on top of that is just a little cherry on the Sunday. It was a very good effort by a few people in our department to uh, put together the app. A lot of the verification was through aerial imagery and being able to visually interpret the imagery to determine whether there was gravel or asphalt there. And then in some instances, just visual verification or local knowledge of the people that were doing the mapping. Is there anything surprising that you discovered while you were creating these maps? Just how big the network really was. Everyone really knew that, that the network was big. But 250 miles is a pretty large amount of roads. However, it is shrinking. The roads are going down and in some instances, it's just, it's too, you have to pave a road. There's, there's, in some ways, there's no way to get around it. I think an example of that would be Snickersville Turnpike. You know, a lot of people might like to, that be, to be unpaved. However, it's just not, it's not feasible for the amount of traffic that's on there and you know, who's, and how much, it, how much traffic it does contain. It would be, it'll be probably a little bit more dangerous if there was just, if it was unpaved in that situation. So do you think it deter it's determined by how many cars are on a road that determines whether it gets paved? I think that there's, pro there's a lot of things that go into like a road getting paved, whether it's getting paved or it's, or it's going to remain unpaved. There's a lot of coordination that goes into that between Loudoun County uh, through with VDOT. And then, you know, you have local coalitions and, and, and rural roads committees that are there to represent the preservation efforts. Is it easier to maintain an unpaved road opposed to a paved? There's definitely a cost savings to a road being unpaved as opposed to having it paved. The cost of having a road paved is pretty expensive. The cost of maintaining an unpaved road doesn't even come close to those kind of figures. It's gorgeous today. There is 15,000 horses in this area. I don't think we'll see them all today, but we might see some. How are horses and bicycle riders going to coexist? on these royal roads. The gravel roads make a great opportunity for um, gravel road riders and equestrians to coexist. The gravel road biking community is the new person on the block out here. People that have been in equestrian and farming this land and, the, and a part of these roads have been here for generations. So I think a way of like kind of being courteous to our gracious hosts on these roads is, you know, Let's be safe. This whole area was inhabited by the Quakers. A lot of Quakers in this area. One of a really interesting little side note as far as Civil War and those around that, that time, one of the last stops on the Underground Railroad was at Springdale Farm. And that's just a, right on the south portion of Lincoln. You can go to Springdale and it's a nice, beautiful B&B. And you can go there and uh, enjoy, you know, a little bit of Lincoln life. There's a lot of working farms here. Absolutely. There's a really active uh, community out this way. And you know what, as, uh, the, as there's a gravel road community, there's a little farm community too, where you know you meet up with your neighbors, you trade some, uh, trade, trade some, trade some produce. We're just about to enter Philemont. Ah, the small town of Philemont. Yes. All right, don't sneeze. So, <laughs> you might miss it. Here we go, the famous Philmont General Store. It's the only place that, in this area that has a post office inside a market. So it's kind of cool. Very nice. Yes. There's people that have lived here for generations and the people have farmed these lands. They've had equestrian back here and they're 
such a part of this whole history in Western Loudoun that I think it's important for people when they come here that they're aware of that and to honor those traditions that have already been here way before they have been here. And people just need to be aware of what they're riding into. Ooh, All right, danger, danger, danger. You can't go too fast down these hills. Oh. Should have gotten that on film. I can't hold the camera and ride the bike at the same time. It's a little difficult with these gravel bars going down a hill. <laughs> this is a conservation easement of where we're standing right now and also the site of a Civil War skirmish. There's many of those located in Loudoun County and this is one of those areas where cannonballs were being shot around. This is really nice to be out here and, you know, have these like little treasures. And the fact that the, the gravel roads are part of it, it's just so unique. The more I'm out here, the more I'm getting an appreciation for them and what they mean. Being a bike advocate, that much more rewarding. Everybody has their thing that they latch on to of like what makes it important, what's important out there. Maybe you're a farmer, equestrian, whatever. Well, for me, it's the gravel. And I love using the gravel to make this a better place for everybody. Gravel riding has been the in thing for a while now, and it's really easy to see why, especially out here in the Virginia countryside. Join us for our next adventure. Hope, Hope to, to see you riding. riding. The thing about the app that's kind of interesting is that, you know, this is technology that is just bringing the roads that have been here for years and years and years and years. You know, people have been riding these roads and perhaps the thought was, hey, you know, this is such a cool resource. We Let's keep this as a little secret. However, now I think things are changing where, you know, now to promote these gravel roads and to get people on their bicycles and to make them aware and to educate people of these roads and to make them, you know, understand why they're so important it's kind of, I think it's an interesting kind of dynamic, you know, when you throw in uh, the pandemic and all the people that are on bicycles now, and, you know, they could be very new riders and don't know what they're riding into. And uh, it's really important that when people come out here, they're aware of what they're riding into.